From Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Dave DeForest reporting. Syria's state news agency says the Syrian government says it is ready to resume United Nations-sponsored peace talks with the opposition in Geneva at the end of August. The announcement follows talks in Damascus between UN Special Envoy Ramzi Eldin Ramzi and a Syrian Deputy Foreign Minister Faisal Mikdad. I explained to the, uh, the minister uh, how we intend to proceed and we discussed uh, how to render this process of political transition, which has already been endorsed by the Security Council. In other developments, the Britain-based London Observatory for Human Rights says U.S.-backed forces have driven Islamic State forces from 70 percent of the besieged city of Manbij near the Turkish border. And the International Rescue Committee says airstrikes targeted a hospital in the opposition-controlled town of Dara, killing at least six people. The identity of the aircraft was not clear. A huge explosion has been reported outside a guest house in Kabul. The Northgate Hotel near the Kabul airport housed foreign contractors, including Americans. The Taliban says it set off a truck bomb outside the building, causing a large number of casualties. There is no independent verification of that claim. At least 13 people have been killed, including seven attackers in an assault on a Somali police compound in Mogadishu. Somalia's internal security minister says the target of the attack was the headquarters building of the Criminal Investigation Department. The militant group Al-Shabaab has claimed responsibility for that attack. For more on that and other news stories, take a look at our website. It's voanews.com. This is VOA News. Iraqi officials say militants have launched two attacks on energy facilities in northern Iraq, killing at least five people. Both assaults Sunday took place in Kurdish-controlled areas of Kirkuk province. Turkey intensified its crackdown Sunday on officials who allegedly played a role in the failed coup in mid-July, dismissing nearly 1,400 military personnel. Among those discharged was the top aide to President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Mr. Erdogan is seeking to tighten his grip on the country's armed forces and its spy agency. New York-based Human Rights Watch is demanding authorities in Afghanistan prosecute militia forces for the abuse and killing of civilians in Faryab province. The group says its probe into an attack in June has found members of the Junbish militia loyal to first Vice President Abdul Rashid Dostum behind the violence. The father of U.S. Army Captain Humayun Khan, who died while fighting for his country, has called on Republican leaders to repudiate Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump for comments seen by many as attempts to degrade the sacrifices of his son. Speaking Sunday on national television, Kizir Khan described Trump as unfit for the leadership of the country. Earlier in an interview aired on ABC News, Trump said he himself has made a lot of sacrifices as a businessman creating jobs for people. I think I've made a lot of sacrifices. Uh, I work very, very hard. I've created thousands and thousands of jobs, tens of thousands of jobs, uh, built great structures. I've done, I've had, I've had tremendous success. Uh, I think Those I've done a lot. Trump planned to campaign Monday in the industrial states of Ohio and Pennsylvania, key states where Clinton is also campaigning. Democratic candidate Clinton was on Fox News Sunday and, he, and she said Republican Donald Trump's views about Russia raise national security issues. She accused Trump of having what she called an absolute allegiance to Russian policy goals. And we know that uh, Donald Trump has shown 
a very troubling uh, willingness to back up Putin, to support Putin. Trump, in an interview with ABC News, said he has no relationship with Russian President Vladimir Putin. <laughs> Media tallies indicate former defense minister Yuriko Koike is the winner in Sunday's Tokyo gubernatorial election, becoming the first female governor of the capital city. A record 21 candidates ran to become the governor of the city, as it prepares to host the 2020 Olympic Games, the office became vacant when the last governor resigned because of a financial scandal. In Washington, I'm Dave DeForest. That's the latest world news from BOA.